Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Lebanon Board of Works meeting for May 13th, 2019. Our first order of business will be the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, now we'll move on to the roll call members. Madam Clerk, we call the roll. Sure. Mayor Gentry. Present. Jane Taylor. Present. Bill Stoner. Present. Dick Robertson. Present. Alan Milburn. Present. Thank you. Very good. Now we'll move on to the approval of the minutes from our previous meeting. Any changes or edits to the minutes? Wouldn't to entertain a motion to approve? I make a motion we approve the minutes. Motion to approve is our second. Second. Motion as second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Minutes are approved. All right, now we'll move on to department head reports. Uh, first up is police department, Chief Morgan. Good evening. Since the last Board of Works meeting, the Lebanon Police Department responded to 918 calls for service and a total of 38 people were arrested. Four for operating while intoxicated, three for driving while suspended, 14 for wanted on a warrant, one operating a motor vehicle without receiving a license, three for possession of methamphetamine, two for dealing methamphetamine, three for possession of marijuana, one for possession of a controlled substance, <clears throat> two for armed robbery, two for battery, two for resisting law enforcement, one for burglary. Uh, six handgun permit applications were sent on to the state for final approval. And April 29th and 30th, the Lebanon Police Department hosted the Warrior Poet Society's Pistol Course. The course is taught by former Army Ranger John Lavelle and covers high stress shooting. Officers Jason Morgan and Austin Scott attended the course. On April 29th to May 3rd, Officers Justin Knox and Sergeant Ryan Williamson attended the Axon International Taser Instructor Conference. Well, there they were recertified as Taser Instructors and received the latest updates and training. On May 9th, we had our department-wide firearms training where we concentrated on pistol marksmanship and active shooter drills with their M4 carbines. On May 1st, Jameson Wright began his career with the Lebanon Police Department, and Austin McCloskey and Graydon Robertson will start on the 15th. All three of them will be going to the academy on the 20th for the physical agility test pre-exam. And then on the 28th, they'll actually go attend the academy, start it. And we are currently still have one position open. Uh, we'll be accepting pre-applications until the 31st of this month. So anybody who's interested, please come to the police department and get your pre-app. That's okay. all I have. Very good. Any questions for Chief Morgan from the board? Nope. Any questions from the public? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Chief Batts. Next up, fire department. Good evening, everyone. So far, May has proved to be a very busy month for the Lebanon Fire Department. Since the last Board of Works meeting, Lebanon Fire has made 165 emergency calls of service, logged 450 training hours, performed 61 commercial inspections, installed three car seats, and participated in seven public education events. On April 29th through May 1st, Jason Adams, Matt Young, and Zach Ruark attended a three-day truck company ops training class. This was at the fire department training network. This is a high intensity, advanced level course focusing on search, breaching, and ventilation. Starting tomorrow through Wednesday, LFD is hosting three days of truck company ops training at the Boone County Training Tower. Uh, we've invited uh, Center Township Fire, Zionsville Fire, Whitestown Fire, Pittsburgh Fire, and Perry Fire to attend the training. And we're gonna focus on breaching and search and this will be done under live fire training i want to take this opportunity to invite any member of the board of works to come out and uh, view the training uh, come to the command post we start tomorrow morning at 9 a.m and it's the same for wednesday and thursday so if you have some free time you'd like to come out and see the training activities feel free to do so Today, the lieutenant candidates participated in their competency exam. We had five candidates move on to the practical and the interview, and we will hold that on May 30th. 
Our two firefighters in the Pike Township Fire Academy are doing very well and getting excellent reviews. They're finishing up their EMT portion and fire school begins on Monday. That's all I have this evening. Thank you, Chief. Any questions from the board? No. Any questions for the public? Okay. Thank you, sir. Next up, uh, Parks Department, John Messenger. Good evening. Uh, we're gearing up for the Mel Canyon uh, race this weekend. Uh, no pun intended. We're gearing up. Okay. <laughs> uh, they will begin setting up early Friday morning along with all of us. Uh, Joe will expand on it more in a few minutes here. Uh, we have officially started issuing dog license at the dog park since we started. We have 70 re registered pups already. So that is a free license. You don't have to show shot records or anything. Stop in the park office and we'll get you set up. Uh, that helps to locate and we also are collaborating with other departments so we can keep an eye on those pups. Uh, we have started to fill our pool. In fact, it's already full. Uh, Spirit Corporation is going to be out tomorrow to help us uh, open it. Uh, there again, we have to submit a couple samples to the state, you know, get those submitted, passed, which we will uh, be ready to open Memorial Day. Uh, we have some in-service training on Saturday with our lifeguards. We have 17 new staff this year, so we'll be doing some in-service. Um, probably do about four hours of training there so everybody knows all the safety regulations and rules and what to do in case of any emergencies, which we hope we don't have any. Um, here again, we will be opening uh, Memorial Day. We will close, though, after Memorial Weekend for Tuesday and Wednesday while the kids finish up their school. Uh, they are the majority of our lifeguards, and we need them, and we'll be short-staffed. So we will open back up on Thursday the 30th. Uh, the dog park uh, is in great shape. Uh, we're looking at a road later on this evening, uh, access to the park. We have a road, but we want an asphalt road. Uh, there again, the fence is up, the lighting's on, all the electrics going. We have security pros coming out. They do our security system, uh, which is uh, a couple cameras. We also have the security to access the gates, and they will be installing that sometime this week. We'll be rolling out later this week, uh, opening date, uh, soft opening as far as that goes uh, for people to get registered, and we have all the legal notices that you need to sign and your shot records. That will all be tracked through Security Pro. It's a great system. A lot of other facilities use this. Jeffersonville is kind of our cookie cutter that we've copied after. Uh, the splash pad, again, is uh, great. We have uh, pretty much all the work completed to the most part. We're just hooking up some uh, final pipes that we need to, plumbing fixtures, a little bit of electrical. But all the sidewalks been poured, a coating over the splash pad itself. The benches have been set. Again, it looks fantastic. I don't know if you've seen any of the pictures on any of the social media. Uh, got compliment from an engineer, a competitor there just a second ago. He said how great it looks. Um, you know, but it is. A lot of people have complimented. Uh, anyway, that will be opening Memorial Day also. Uh, we have to get some samples. Uh, we're waiting on some people to come down from Canada to show us uh, actually how all of it works. It's a little different type of system, uh, but we feel very confident that we'll be open Memorial Day. Um, we won't have all the landscaping, some of that stuff done. Uh, the fencing isn't even coming in until uh, Memorial Day. <coughs> Other than that, we're, we're going to open it up anyway and get it going. It's a great attraction, a lot of people looking forward to it. And temperatures, I imagine, will be 90 degrees by then, too. Um, <laughs> There again, we had cupcakes and canvas uh, for the mother-daughter, kind of a mother-daughter event last weekend. Uh, weather turned out pretty good. They got to be outside the cabin. Pretty pictures all over. Allison did a great job with that. Um, also, this Sunday kicks off our co-ed softball league. Uh, we're excited to get the season started. Uh, just have quite a few events coming up. Keep posted on the uh, um, uh, website as far as all the events. I think we have three uh, the week after. Uh, fishing Derby, I, I can't even uh, off the top, a uh, car show, and then a Renaissance Festival down at uh, you know, Abner Longley. Also, the Memorial Shelter, uh, I want to thank uh, Rotary and, and uh, uh, the, the uh, Park Foundation for helping us out with that project. It's looking fantastic. If you've been by Memorial Park, you'll see the beautiful uh, uh, sidewalk going up to it. We have a few things to fix there too, but uh, for the most part, electrical should be in by the end of this week and 
going to light it up. We have some up lighting that's just going to look beautiful and looking forward to it. Everybody, the staff's doing a great job. Can't say much uh, enough about uh, Taylor and Allison, Todd and, and Cole and the rest of the Parks Department keeping the grass mode is a feat in itself and they've done it fantastic. So uh, that's all I had. John, just to clarify on the park or the pool opening date, is it Memorial Day weekend or is yes, it? Yes, Memorial Day. Okay, weekend. so the that Saturday would be of Memorial Day. Saturday, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it would be yeah. the Saturday. What I, I probably you, you were just saying Memorial Day. I just didn't want to make sure. Labor Day, so I'm already in September. <laughs> so don't, don't listen to me. So it's that first our website. That's what I should say. I so do want to thank the street department ahead of time too. They're helping us set up for this Mel Canyon and tear down, and we couldn't do anything without the collaboration there. Police doing a fantastic job. Police in the parks and. Everybody's just doing a good job. That's yeah. all I have. Thanks, John. Thank Clarification. John, questions? Yes. Uh, two questions. One, what's the, uh, is there a time frame on the doggy park when it's open? Uh, looking at uh, probably June 1st is what No, we're... I mean during the day. Oh, during the day, yeah. yes. We have the hours set. I'm not sure. I think it's sunrise or sunset. Yeah. Sunrise, sunset. We have lighting out there, but that's just for the police to patrol and the like. Okay. All the dogs do have to have their shot records, They do right? have to have shot records, okay. and the way that access will work, you know, kick on when you have them, and then if any of the shots, because there's several shots or at different times, it will kick you out of the system. You won't be able to have access to the dog park. Cool. The uh, the shots are required for the park, but they're not required for the license. Those are two Correct. separate. Yeah. yeah, the dog license, there are no shots required. That's just for in case of a dog getting lost throughout the city, but the dog park will have a fee to it. Uh, we have the fees and those will be posted this week. Okay. Any other questions for the, from the board for John? Any questions for the public? Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, next up is engineering department, Kevin Krulik. Good evening. Engineering uh, report, uh, since we last met on, I believe, the 22nd, it's been a few weeks, but um, a lot of stuff still going on downtown. Uh, the, uh, we, we finished uh, a couple of last minute or final cleanup things in phase one, which was the Main Street section, uh, with the water demolition at Main and State Road 39. You might remember a couple weeks back, we had, to, had some traffic control in that intersection so that we could dig down and remove a, uh, an old water cross that was located in the middle of that intersection. Um, and that completes really all the major work with the first three phases. Uh, phases one through three, happy to report the decorative light pole banners were, were in and have, and have been up for a couple weeks now. Uh, I think uh, the response on those has been very positive. Everyone seems to like that, seems to like the idea of seeing their kids and family members' pictures up there on the banners. So. Uh, uh, if you haven't seen those yet, uh, you might take a look. You might find someone you know up on the banners. Uh, also on phase four, which is that first section of West Main Street between 39 and uh, West Street, uh, the pavers were all completed on the path. Street lights and signs have all been installed. The sod went down. Uh, we do have uh, some remaining landscaping on phases one through three around the square. Uh, those are primarily annuals and, and grasses that uh, it's just not been uh, the right conditions to harvest those and to uh, transplant and plant those on the site. Uh, but I'm told sometime within the next 30 days, all that landscaping will be wrapped up as those materials come become available. Uh, moving further west, phase five, the first phase or the next phase from uh, West Street to Lafayette Avenue, water service laterals are all in, the storm sewer is all in. We have cement stabilized that subgrade in that section. We have completed all the subsurface drains and, uh, and then also one last thing on phase four, also happy to report that uh, that opened to traffic on May 3rd, which was quite a bit ahead of our deadline. Our contractual deadline uh, did not require them to open that until June 30th. So, so we're, we're making really good progress with the team from White Construction. Can't thank them enough for the, the effort, especially uh, in this first part of the year. Uh, work still ongoing, work expected in the next few weeks. Uh, this week, there's going to be a lot happening on phase five. The base asphalt should start going down. Uh, curbs uh, will start later in the week. Uh, water main installation continues west of Lafayette Avenue, as well as storm sewer installation. So a lot of work still to happen there, but you will start to see uh, that next phase, phase five, begin to take shape here um, 
actually in the coming week, you'll see a lot of activity there. Um, west side of State Road 39 between Maine and Washington, I had survey crews out here last week uh, performing the topo that we need to finalize the design for the, the west side of the street. And uh, also we're working on final coordinations with NDOT on some permit revisions that were needed for the signal work and intersection improvements at State Road 32 and Meridian. So we'll look for the first item on the agenda there is to install the large um, traffic light pole foundations that go down over 24 feet in the ground. So those will be happening here in the next coming weeks. Uh, and then we'll continue on with infrastructure and ultimately curbs and sidewalk and, and asphalt patching. Again, I'll always remind everyone to continue to support our downtown businesses. We can't forget uh, how much they need our support. Uh, visit the Heart of Lebanon Facebook page. Uh, look for updates there. I uh, just um, want to thank everyone for their patience and support as we went through a, uh, a trying list uh, last year trying to put that downtown back together. But uh, we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel at this point. Um, Let's see, next thing I want to update you on, the Northern Interchange Study. Uh, announcements are expected next month on the Infra Grant. We're also expecting next month the uh, U.S. Department of Transportation Build Grant application will open up and we'll be ready for a July application there. Um, NDOT has also came back to us. I think this is a good sign, have asked us to, uh, to have our design team work on some additional options to try to do some value engineering to get some costs down on that northern interchange. You might remember the original price tag for that northern interchange was about $68 million. So they're working on options to get that down closer into the, into the $40 million range. So more updates to come there as we continue to work through those options with the state. Uh, pavement resurfacing program for this year. Bid packages were published on the 26th of April. We held our, our pre-bid meeting uh, last week, last Monday on the 6th and bids are scheduled to open on the 28th, the day after Memorial Day. Uh, no, no new updates, same uh, road program that you've already approved is going on there. Uh, the only other thing would be community crossing grants that will open up again uh, in July. We'll be ready for those. Sidewalk replacement program or phase one bid packages were also published on the 26th. We also held our pre-bid meeting on the 6th last week and uh, bids are also scheduled to be opened um, on the 28th. Uh, right-of-way acquisition continues on Lafayette Avenue and Whit Road. That once we have the right-of-way acquired there, that will, uh, that will amount to phase two of our active living sidewalk program uh, construction for the year. Also uh, happy to report uh, thanks to the mayor and the, uh, the street department. We've been work doing some work with traffic calming devices and improving our pedestrian uh, access at Harney Elementary over the last week. Uh, we've got a little bit more work to do there. Uh, we're just waiting for weather to cooperate. Uh, the next phase will be on the north side of Harney Elementary. Uh, and then Dave and the street department have also put out all the, uh, the crosswalk warning signs at the various uh, elementary schools and also the uh, Memorial Park. So take a look, for, look out for those. Be aware of anyone that might be in the crosswalk. And uh, I think we have also wrapped up, yes, we've wrapped up all the sidewalks along Lafayette Avenue south of camp. So you now can walk from, uh, from camp around the intersection of Hoy, the viaduct there, and walk all the way, excuse me, yeah, the intersection of Hoy, all the way up to Camp Street on sidewalks on the west side of the road. So a much welcomed improvement there. More, more to come, though, on our sidewalk program. Um, Material price bids for the street department. We are rebidding our stone, sand, concrete. Uh, those have been issued and will be opened later tonight. So we're hoping to get some good, uh, some good competitive pricing there. Indianapolis Avenue phase two. Uh, obviously the water relocation work continues and they're nearing the end of, of that work. Uh, road closures are expected to start changing. So look for changes in traffic patterns in the coming week. In fact, um, signs have went up saying that we will begin closing the road on or after the 20th, uh, which is late next week. Uh, the road will close for 45 days between Spencer Avenue south to and including the Noble Street intersection. 
while we reconstruct that phase, then that will open up after 45 days. And then south of Indianapolis, or south of uh, Noble Street, Indianapolis Avenue will become one way north between Hendricks and Noble Street. Uh, and that project then is scheduled to wrap up by November 15th with us fully opening that road. Uh, Grant Street, no real updates there. Still working with NDOT and the county to uh, do some project bundling there on their road, on our road and their bridge project. Um, Riley Ridge continues with several, uh, several home starts, a couple of additional home starts actually in the last, uh, the last few weeks. Uh, Sunbrook. Our next uh, residential project, phase one plans have now been approved for, pre for construction. A pre-construction meeting was held last week, and we understand the contractor is planning to start work in early June. Uh, Gateway Marketplace, uh, all the storm sewer, sanitary sewer, water infrastructure is in place. Uh, subgrade preparation continues for paving. Uh, that will happen earlier this summer. Uh, expect to wrap up all that subgrade prep in the next two weeks. Happy to report that Burger King has filed for their final building permits and will be starting here shortly. And then, as m most of you know this already, but uh, also happy to report that we've received commitments from Logan's Roadhouse, Fairfield Inn by Marriott, and Moe's Southwest Grill. All those uh, scheduling to uh, file site uh, construction plans later in the year. So, a lot going on. We remain busy. Uh, this looks to be finally our first good week of weather, and uh, we'll continue to work as hard as we can. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Dick. Do we have traffic counts on Newland Drive? Do we counters? have right? traffic counters on Newland Drive? Um, yeah. Right by the park? Right by the park? What do you say? What, the pedestrian uh, yeah, dollars right there, that are in the center yeah, of the street? Just, just, yeah, we counted those. We counted Newland Drive before we put those up. And we're going to count them afterwards because our counters also measure speed. So we want to see how effective those those pedestrian warning, okay. pedestrian crossing signs. I saw are. I saw those out there, and I thought yep. they were counters. <laughs> yep, that's part of my experiments we're doing around the city on traffic. So that's where we want to see how much the uh, speed signs change sure. impact. So, yep. Um, any other questions for Kevin? Oh. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. I actually have one question. I apologize. Um, sure. Do we have a estimated? I know, I'm not going to hold you to it, but estimated timeline of phase five of Main Street being done. Yeah, the last date I have seen from the contractor was July 8th. Okay, would be opening that phase from uh, West Street to Lafayette Avenue. I will say though, the pace that they're on, uh, although they haven't published a new schedule for us in about three weeks, uh, the pace they're on, uh, it, we would we should be easily ahead of that schedule, as, especially with the, the weather seeming to break this week. Uh, I, I would anticipate, though, sometime by early July that, that road will be open. Very good. Uh, any questions for the public? Okay, thanks, sir. Uh, next up, uh, Planning Department, Ben Bottrager. Good evening, board members. Uh, planning department continues to remain busy, just like our friends in the engineering department. Uh, we completed another 64 building inspectors in the last uh, uh, three, three or so weeks. And I do know of those 64 building inspectors, 13 of those happened on one day, and two of them happened on a holiday where our office is closed. So we are, we're out there doing a lot of work, even when we're not supposed to be doing work. So there's a lot of construction happening. Uh, additional 33 permits were issued, including those. I think Kevin mentioned there's three new new home starts, so a uh, good sign there that the, that's continuing. On the code enforcement side, uh, we're starting to hit our, our warmer season, so you'll see the one thing that was added since the last time is grass and weed complaints, and we addressed 52 of those in the last few weeks. So that was uh, we're, we continue to remain busy across the board on all our, our code enforcement operations, and they're doing a great job with that. One of our programs I just wanted to highlight for you guys, uh, the sidewalk cost share program has been... Uh, very popular so far this year. As you, if you may recall, previous in previous years, we had, the cost share was that the applicant would cover the cost of the labor and the city would cover the cost of material, which represented a city about 25% and the applicant about 75%. Uh, we changed that structure to 50-50 this year where the city is, is covering 50% of the cost. I don't know if that's what the change, but we've been, it's been a very popular program. We've already received 12 applications this year. Uh, seven of those have walks have already been installed. We only did 17 applications all of last year. So 
the program's only been available for five weeks and we already have 12 applications. So it's, it's going real strong and we've already invested more than half of our $20,000 budget for the year in the cost share program. So it's been very effective and very popular this year. So we're very excited to see that and hopefully that continues. So that's, that's all the updates I have. They have to answer any questions. Any questions for Ben from the board? No. Any questions from the public? Thank you, sir. Uh, next up is Street and Stormwater Department. Dave Newell. Hello. I think I need to go before Kevin. He tends to take everything I got. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, been out patching holes. We're going to do some more of that this week. We got a pretty good handle on the hole patching. Change the process a little bit so we square them up first and tack them and last longer is the theory behind that. Uh, we have all but one truck with our GPS is installed now. And once they're all installed, we'll put them out there and, and activate them all at once because they start billing you from when you activate them. So we just keep them on the same bill cycle. Uh, brush and chipper truck's been out, been pretty busy. So we've been staying busy with it. Uh, we did put up all the pedestrian cost walk signs, but Kevin already mentioned that. So uh, stormwater crew's been very busy. Uh, we've been repairing repairing and cleaning some structures. We've uh, got one on Ash Street. We're helping, we're working alongside Joe Wilson to get fixed up. So they're in the process of that today. We did have a huge turnout for spring cleanup Friday and Saturday. Friday, we estimated 221 vehicles and Saturday, 373, which usually we're lucky to get 300 and something the whole weekend. So almost 600, there's 594 total. And that's not counting trailers, not probably counting some people we missed. We were so busy, but I think a lot of that's due to Ben's crew, you know, cracking down on cleaning up the city. And a lot of people said that when they came through, they're like, hey, man, we're trying to clean up from enforcing code. So that works hand in hand. So they, they've they definitely been working. <laughs> Kept us busy. <laughs> um, let's see, we will be hosting a bicycle sale May 15th from 5 to 8 p.m. at our uh, shop at 1301 Lafayette Avenue. We have a variety of bikes because uh, we didn't do one last year. So we've got kids' bikes, adult bikes, teenage bikes. I mean, just you name it, we got them. So if you, summer's coming up with the trails, come get a bike for your family. That's what we're hoping they'll do. They'll be probably most expensive bike be twenty dollars. I mean, so there's no reason you can't come get a bike. Okay. So uh, I wouldn't even begin to know how many we got, but there's a bunch. So <laughs> there's a variety. Uh, the cleanest city will be hosting an annual community cleanup May 16th through the 18th. So uh, they have people pick up the trash around the city and the street stormwater department. We usually send out a couple guys to pick up the bags of trash. We just team up with them. Uh, helps clean up easements and the city. So it really helps us out as well. So that's why we team up with them on that. And um, another thing, the street department is hiring. So come on in and fill a nap come work for the city that's all I got okay. any questions for Dave yeah I do have a, a one question David I noticed coming down this evening at uh, Tiger Way and East Street there there's a it's a four-way stop now but there's a uh, four-way stop out in the middle of the intersection so I'm assuming we're having a problem on that intersection or yeah well we're not if the problem is is the trees have bloomed now so uh, Kevin's in the process of having those trees moved and it's been delayed a couple times because of the weather. So we put the four way back out there just because you can't see the stops real well. But once those right. trees are relocated, the, that, that, that temporary that, stop. So will just be temporary, moved. I'll come back out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Dave? Nope. Any questions from the public? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And last but not least, uh, communications, community development, Joe Page. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Last but not least, <laughs> I'm happy to report it was delivery day uh, within the street departments as part of the community development departments. Thanks in advance to, to Dave and the crew for letting us store for the time being temporarily. Wait for it. I'll just hold it up while you're there. You go, Matt. Thanks. These are 20 blank tigers that were delivered this morning from Nebraska. 
They are fiberglass. This is Icon Poly. We got 20 of them. Uh, the long-term plan is to, uh, we've reached out to five or six area artists who are going to, to paint these tigers and they'll be placed throughout our community. And all the um, you know, buildings, the fire station, police department, uh, here in the municipal building, um, all the schools in the Lebanon Community School Corporation, so all four elementaries, the middle school and the high school, all get one. Um, and they will get to pick out the design, give you a little closer look at, so funny, one of the street guys was, was wanting to lift it up like Simba, like in the Lion King, that would be <laughs> yeah. hilarious. But, um, so what, what's gonna happen is, um, each, each of the entities will, will have uh, the opportunity to decorate, paint, uh, come up with a, a unique kind of backstory potentially, and of course name for their tiger. Uh, we will set up a tiger trail where folks can visit all, all the tigers in the pride that we have. And so um, those, like I said, will be sprinkled throughout the community. Also, um, depending on the, the number we have left, we may open it up to the public to potentially purchase them for their business and, and be able to, to join in that. Other communities have done this as kind of a quality of life uh, deal. It, it's, it's really endearing to a community, and so we're looking to have that same reaction here in Lebanon. And so now the Tigers are uh, with us and, and made the trip safely. Um, the area artists can, can get to work with uh, brainstorming the different departments. I know the street guys already have their kind of idea of what they, they want to do. Uh, but our area artists will be reaching out and compensated for their work and being able to come up with cool ideas to, um, to paint each, each tiger. And then we'll, of course, have them mounted around uh, those establishments. And so uh, really looking forward to, to getting this, this quality of life initiative going and getting it out of the community and really getting um, some public support behind it. So you can, you can envision all the, the kids from Stokes or Central, you know, being able to, to have that kind of... Um, ownership over their tiger and, and being able to name it and all those things. Again, this is what endears public to their community. And so we're really excited to uh, offer this initiative and, and launch it. Uh, another initiative we launched new in 19, this has been our Lebanon, our Love and Lebanon podcast. That continues to go well right now. Uh, we are four episodes in. We have the mayor. We talked code enforcement as well uh, with the, the, the planning department. We talked to the public library about an, an event coming up and also programming and historic preservation. And so uh, we continue to, to reach out to the public and we're setting up interviews uh, with members of the public who have seen positive reaction to uh, our podcast so far. It's on uh, Google Play, iTunes, and also Stitcher. So you can search that and find it out, and, and it's kind of an informal discussion. It's really laid back. We brought in the Darth Vader music with our, our code enforcement team because, you know, let's be honest, you know, there's that connotation. And so uh, just kind of taking a tongue-in-cheek, a lighthearted look at um, life in general, kind of breaking down the, the formality of, of these meetings here. So uh, a lot of fun, and, and if you want to learn more about the podcast or be on it, Love in Lebanon at lebanon.in.gov is the place to go. No G in Love in Lebanon. Uh, finally, as John alluded to earlier, uh, Dave did as well, I believe, May 18th and 19th, it's coming up this weekend, is the Kenyon Classic. Uh, we're still in need of volunteers. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun this, this year. Mel's going to be out there on both days. Racing will be from 9 to 5, so we'll have some, some food trucks, we'll have um, some entertainment as well. We're bringing in Zorb Ball Racing. So you, you may have seen the, the big knocker balls where you can get in the, the big inflatable balls and bump into each other. These are Zorb Balls. And so you're going to get in, you're going to race your an opponent through a track. And so it's like you're, you're a hamster inside the ball and you're going to go. <laughs> That's one of the, the free offerings that we have. And also another activity called Meltdown. If you've seen uh, American Ninja Warrior or Wipeout, uh, there'll be four different stations with a large arm. It's a um, mechanical arm and whoever can stay on the longest, it'll move at random with random speed um, and going at different contestants. So the last person to let be less standing is the winner. And so those two things will be, we offered free of charge. Uh, we want the public to come out and enjoy it. Just check the weather forecast in the back. It's gonna be a great, great weekend. And so looking forward to having that out there. Uh, a couple things we're offering this year, we're gonna give away copies, signed copies of Mel's book. And also uh, we'll have autograph sessions with Mel there. And so um, the first, um, 150 people each day will be able to get the, the picture of the Kenyan car when it was the city of Lebanon, his Indy car, and Mel will, will sign that and you can get up close and, and personal with Mel and, and be able to, to share a story with him and, and experience. And so looking forward to offering uh, that. More details are on the city's website. If you'd like to volunteer, there's also a link there as well. Um, get you up close and personal, uh, get a really good workout, uh, get you a free t-shirt and pizza and, and get you right there in the action. So uh, again, that's Saturday and Sunday, 
And uh, setup begins at 5, as John mentioned. The racing's from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Okay. Thank you, Joe. A lot of fun stuff going on. Any questions for him from the board? No. Any questions from the public? I was, I was just wondering if we needed a, a, a license for a kennel or something for all those tigers in there. Uh, I think they're good. <laughs> they like, good. They've got, they, they came good. with their shots from they're Nebraska, so they're good. <laughs> <laughs> they're good. Get right up to them. <clears throat> um, all right, so let's, that concludes uh, department head reports. So we'll move on to uh, – uh, actually, uh, do I have consent to move to new business first? We have a, a special request tonight from the Lions Club. Consent? Consent? Okay. Uh, a special guest. I was just looking for it. Okay. Uh, Councilman Fleming, we have a request from the Lions Club tonight. All right. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the board. I appreciate you seeing me tonight. I'm here tonight as the president of Lebanon Lions Club. So I'll tell you what we have going on here as well. On uh, June 7th, we're having our 63rd annual hoagie sale. 63 years we've been doing this now. So because of the new construction on the courthouse, we only do it on the north side of the courthouse square. And uh, we've decided this year that we'd like it to move it to the east side in the plaza area because of the beautiful area that's been set up out there. The Lions Club has been very happy with the improvements and, and glad to see an opportunity and place for us to you know, show our community and be able to actually sell hoagies on the square as well. Now, uh, we have already received permission from the uh, county commissioners to use their portion of the courthouse uh, sidewalk, but we want to use the plaza itself for our tent when we're actually sell the, sell the hoagies. So we're asking permission tonight to use the plaza on June 7th from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. Uh, on the east side of the courthouse square. And that is our request. Okay. So no street closures. No street closures. Just the strictly the plaza area. We just would like to use that plaza. Okay. Um, there will be people buying hoagies, so I would expect there will probably be some stopping along the way, but uh, we will move them along as quickly as possible. Okay. So it would be like a drive-up window then, right? Pretty much. I mean, okay. it's a beautiful setup, too. Um, actually, it's going to be easier to use it now than it was before construction because we have an easier way to get to them, and it's a lot safer now for our members to go down there handing a hoagie off real quick and move the, move the traffic along. Okay, very good. Yeah. Any concerns or questions with that from the board? So people are just going to walk up? They'll walk up, or they may even drive over, too. I mean, yeah. they can drive right up to us, pay us, and we'll hand them the money. We'll hand yeah. them the hoagie. Good. Well, in, in as much as, ro as Rotary is depending on a lot of those hoagie sandwiches on, yes, <laughs> on the so. 7th of June, <laughs> I'd, I'd make a motion that uh, we grant the request to, uh, for the Lions Club to use the plaza on the east side of this courthouse square from nine, is it 9 to 4? Was that the time? For 9 to 3. 9 to 3, nine to three yes, on sir. June the 7th. Yep. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. That request has been approved. Thank you, and uh, we hope to see all of you out there and get your hoagies. Like you said, 63rd year for a hoagie sale. So uh, we'd love to give back to the community, and this is another way we can do it. Thank how, you. Much are, how much are the hoagies? $5 per hoagie. Gotcha. It's a good deal. We moved up the recipe a little bit last year and added a little more meat to it. So it's a good <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. All right. Thank you. All right, I'll go back to uh, old business now. Uh, so we have the Admiral Only Park, the Dog Park Drive Reconstruction Quote Acceptance and Award. Turn that over to Kevin. Kevin's here. All right, good evening once again. Uh, at uh, the, the meeting that took place uh, on the 22nd of April, uh, you authorized me to seek to seek quotes for um, for a, uh, a park road to accommodate the uh, the dog park. So what you see there, the green line, the thick green line, is the location. Uh, there is an existing temporary drive that's in that location leading back to the uh, the parking lots and the dog park at uh, what used to be the Conservation Club. Uh, so this is on Noble Street from uh, the Hot Pond location south to where the dog park will go. So what you're looking at is a, is a, is a document that, that I put together with the help of uh, John Messenger on what, what they wanted from a, from a road standpoint to get access to that area. 
and then you authorized us to seek quotes at the last meeting. So we sent this document out to, to 12 different paving contractors. We figured we might as well just include everybody. The construction season is, is, uh, is real uh, aggressive and real tight at this point with a lot of contractors getting booked up for the year, so we wanted to make sure we had quotes to, uh, to receive. Uh, we had an estimate that this would be under $50,000, so we were, we were just asking for uh, invited quotes, but we did invite 12 different contractors to look at this. Um, three contractors responded to our request. Uh, unfortunately, the one, one request from Baumgartner Paving was that they were, they were too busy, did not have the capacity to bid on the work at this time. But then we did receive two quotes, one from Grady Brothers Incorporated and one from Triangle Asphalt Paving Company. And uh, happy to report that um, the Triangle Paving Company was the low bidder at uh, $48,500, excuse me, low quoter at $48,500. We did bid some alternates to look at uh, um, using new stone as opposed to recycled stone. So the quote that we are recommending that we receive and move forward with is for using recycled uh, asphalt millings as a base for the road again. So that total for that base quote was $48,500. Uh, if it would appease the board, I, we would ask for your authorization to issue a notice of award to Triangle Asphalt Paving Corporation for $48,500 for the park road, subject to legal review, and ask that any motion also include authorization of the mayor to execute said contract pending legal review. Any questions from the board? No. Okay, then we'll entertain a motion to... Uh, Accept that quote and award that uh, project to Triangle Asphalt, pending final legal review and authorizing myself to sign on your behalf to execute that uh, project. I'll make a motion we approve the uh, Triangle Asphalt bid at $48,500, uh, subject to the legal review and the mayor's signature. Okay. We have motions that are second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That's been approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. I guess you've got a couple more, don't you, Kevin? I got a couple more. All right. Uh, next up was the uh, hearing impaired child warning sign request by Josh Johnson at 1102 Berry Drive. Yes, we received a, a request from Josh Johnson at uh, 1102 Berry Drive, which is in the Chadwick neighborhood, uh, to have a, uh, an impaired, uh, a hearing impaired child sign put up. Um, and so this is, this is completely acceptable, and, and we want to work with, uh, with the Johnson family to make sure this gets taken care of. What you can see here is three pictures. That is Berry Drive that travels between uh, Grant Boulevard and Travis Drive. This is kind of in the, you know, in the middle of the Chadwick neighborhood, and you can see a couple of pictures there, one looking east uh, from the intersection of Berry Drive, one looking west from the intersection of Travis Drive. Uh, so at, at this point, we're just asking for your authorization to, to uh, instruct the street department to put up a, a hearing impaired child warning sign in that area. So do we put a sign on each side of the street or outside their house? Or just one? Like, is it two signs or is it one? Uh, I think we typically put up two signs, like, and I would say in this situation, probably on maybe not all the way to the intersections of, of Barry uh and travis but uh once you come off of barry i'm sorry not Grant. all the way to the ends of uh of barry drive at the intersections of grant and or travis but shortly after you would pull off of those side streets onto mm -hmm. barry that you would see a sign coming from either direction just to to warn you to be on the lookout for a child who may not be able to hear you coming so. right okay. put it in the easement or the right away we would put it in the right away in the right away any questions concerning that? Okay, would entertain a motion to approve the uh, child warning sign request? I make a motion we approve the child warning sign. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? We second the motion. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, that is approved. Uh, I know we are tabling the alley vacation, so now move on to the unit price materials. This is a bid opening. I believe, Rob, you have the bids. 
This is for concrete, uh, sand, and stone. The first one, Mayor Board, is um, from Wilson Concrete Construction. And it looks like um, this has the removal and replacement uh, at $10.20 a square foot for the concrete sidewalks, for the concrete ADA ramps, removal and replacement at um, $825. Yeah, I think it's at $825 each. And that is it for that. Okay. So that's the concrete. So we received one bid for that. Yep. Okay. So next on to sand and stone. Sand and stone, and this looks to be from U.S. Aggregates. All right, give me a second here. There's several pages. Six, seven. All right, I'm just going to read this through you, Kevin. Obviously, you'll uh, take a look at it and see if it's compliant. So it looks like it's. Uh, they have dot number eight stone at $11.75, with freight at $9 for a total of $20.75. Then they have dot number 11 stone at $15.50, with freight at $9 for a total of $24.50. And they have QA number 24 stone sand at $7.50, with freight at $9 for a total of $16.50. And then dot number 53, crushed stone at $8.50. Freight again at $9 for a total of $17.50. They then have a, a different location. They have dot number 24, stone sand, or for sand, I'm sorry, uh, for $8. And then freight at $4.50 for a total of $12.50. And that appears to be all of it. <clears throat> Does that include all the bids? That, that's all that I okay. have. Okay. Seeing that we only have one bid for each material, I, I would ask the board to consider uh, authorizing us to issue a notice of award, obviously pending legal review and contract execution uh, by the mayor, uh, subject to said legal review. Can we do that or no? Uh, typically, yeah, we would need to do that at the next meeting. You need to to review and make sure they're compliant too, right? Can we can we improve them, contingent them on them being compliant or no? That that's what I guess I'm saying. I could include that into my my thoughts there that it would be subject to verifying that all bid documents are compliant. But given the fact there's there's only one bidder for each item that we could forego having to come back here and issue a notice of award that we could just go ahead and issue that tonight subject to verification that the bids are in compliance with the bidding standards and subject to legal review but that's up that's up to the board if you want me to come back in two weeks to to, to make yeah. that official we can yeah. my recommendation is that you need to make the award at the next meeting okay okay yeah. all right so we'll so then we'll uh, review those and either award or reject the bids at our may 28th meeting i believe yep. mm -hmm. okay. thank you thank you kevin uh, okay. all right and next is the downtown streetscape and big four trail big four trail contract change orders 10 through 15. Book. 
<coughs> what I've passed out to you is uh, is a summary of these uh, these six change orders. Uh, these are all things that um, that we are recommending approval on, and that we've worked with the contractor to provide you information on. Uh, really, I, I could say that uh, the packet I've handed you in includes the backup documentation, but really. For purposes of uh, this discussion, I'll primarily be focused on the summary sheet that's on the the front uh, the front page of the packet I just handed out to you. So there are, as I said, six change orders that are in this package of change orders, if you will, uh, totaling uh, seventy nine thousand seven hundred twenty six dollars and twenty cents. Uh, change order number ten is for the removal and replacement of a phase four clay pipe. So on Main Street between State Route 39 and West Street, uh, there was discovered a deteriorating clay pipe as the, the trunk line storm sewer that runs down that road. Um, the original construction documents uh, were assuming that that was still adequate and we were just uh, reusing that pipe. Um, after closer examination, we didn't feel that that was the best course of action. So change order number 10 is for the replacement of that clay pipe with, with uh, reinforced concrete pipe. Uh, change order number 11 is for the purchase of some, some uh, excess trench drain grates. Uh, throughout the process on the main street side of the project, which included the alley, the decorative alley between Peoples and EB, EB Gear. Um, we made the, the call in the field there to shorten up the decorative treatment of that alley at the back of the uh, Peoples Revel Room building. Uh, was, we saw no need to extend it all the way to the intersection with the alley that goes east and west. So all that was just based off of uh, unit prices. So we only paid for the portions of the alley that we installed. But the contractor had already ordered all this decorative grading to go down the center of the alley. And rather than telling him that we're just not going to pay for that, we figured it might be good to just have extra grates for whenever something might happen that would damage a grate. So uh, there is not, though, a, a line item in the contract to purchase said grates. So that's why we have to do this with the change order. So this is a change order that allow us to purchase the extra lineal footage of, of alley trench drain grates for $1,540. You're talking those center grates right down the middle? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Very decorative material. Yeah. You know, at some point, we, it's it's a good thing for us to have extra because if we ever break one, um, it would be a custom order thing. So this yeah. is this is good. You to know what will happen. Some, yeah. uh, we, what we would refer to as attic stock. Right. Um, and we have attic stock on the other decorative materials like the bricks and pavers yeah. and and, uh, and things of that nature. So this is good to add to our supply. Uh, changer number twelve uh, is a credit. Always good to have credit change orders. Our original contract documents had us completely removing the tunnel that goes between the old jail building and the courthouse. Uh, after looking at that, we felt it was just a, a better call to, uh, to core drill through that tunnel and insert our water main through the tunnel rather than completely remove the tunnel. There's a lot of um, utility connections that go through that tunnel, and uh, so this is a uh, this is a much drastically simplified method to to complete the construction on Washington Street. So uh, because we don't have to remove the tunnel and break holes in the base of the tunnel and fill the whole tunnel full of uh, flowable material, uh, there's a credit of approximately six thousand um, dollars. You might think it could be larger. It could have been, but of course, you know, core drilling through the tunnel is not not an inexpensive process. So this is what's left after we, after we subtract out the, the expenses that we did have. So that was negative $6,226.28. Change order number 13, uh, we had some modified um, removal of the county annex building walk. So the county annex building on the north side of Washington Street what we found there is that the sidewalk along the front of that building uh, was, was unique. It was basically oh. poured integral with the foundation for that building. So um, removing that walk 
uh, was not as simple as it was around the rest of the square. So that walk had to be completely saw cut off from the front of that building. And then we had to do some extensive uh, sealing, sealant work to make sure that, that that joint was sealed up there in front of the, uh, the courthouse. So the additional removal and the sealing is all rolled into that uh, for $3,980. The, uh, there is an insta valve that had to be installed on West Street. This, I'm sorry, change order 14 is for an insta valve, which is a valve that is installed into a live water main. The reason we had to do this is because the existing water main infrastructure in that area was so old that it couldn't be turned off. So we had to install this into a live active main in order to isolate the, uh, the phase four water mains to be able to do that construction. Uh, I, I understand though that Lebanon Utilities has agreed to pay that. And so that change order 14 is for $7,862.48 to install that insta valve. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, uh, change order number Actually, this is the least, but uh, change order number 15 is for some modifications we had to do to the Key Bank ATM lot. Uh, we felt better, it was better to run a curb down the, down the interface between the Big Four Trail and that parking lot rather than do an asphalt transition there. So there is some additional work there for uh, some curb work and it was a type of curb, a type of straight curb that we did not have in the existing bid documents. So there's a change order 15 for $1,123 uh, for that, uh, that work. Again, all those change orders that uh, I've just discussed, change orders 10 through 15, total $79,726.20. Change orders prior to this were uh, totaling just over well, they were totaling $72,390.08. Brings our total change orders to date to $152,116.28. $152, um, Reminder one, the contract value for this contract is $7,193,000. We had approximately $575,000 in contingencies allocated in the budget. Uh, in addition to, there's also NDOT participation of 228,000. So all that considered, when I just look at the $7 million contract, we're only at about a 2.11% increase uh, in the overall contract value. And we still have a healthy contingency left, uh, $423,000. At the bottom of that summary there is some of the things that cost that we are still tracking. Uh, so the State Road 32 and Meridian modifications that we made down there to, to do all four corners of that intersection as opposed to just two corners. We're tracking that as approximately $50,000 in costs. Those will be costs that are just included in the unit prices. Uh, Washington Street unsuitable soil remediation. There's still some unsuitable soils that we're tracking that may total $45,000. Washington Street storm sewer replacements, again, storm sewer that we found throughout construction that really needed to be replaced. So we were, uh, some additional replacement there. Uh, the State Road 39 West Side sidewalks for $95,000, including lighting. Uh, some additional sewer lining in the vicinity areas where we do need to line some storm sewers, but we didn't feel as though it would be in our best interest to try to remove those due to the proximity to old buildings and uh, connections to those old buildings. And then there's the uh, bonus, a potential bonus for early completion of $140,000, uh, which we are tracking. That is, that is going to be a valid request from the contractor uh, because they have completed phase four so far ahead of schedule. But all those things right there, um, coincidentally and fortunately, uh, figure in right to where we have as our remaining contingency. So. Uh, the project is in uh, very good financial status at this point, so I wanted to take that opportunity to show you all the financials that, for the project. But as far as what we're asking for tonight, it's approvals of change orders 10 through 15 for a total of $79,726.20. Any questions for Kevin concerning those change orders? No. <clears throat> okay. Would uh, request approval or... Request a motion to approve change orders 10 through 15, totaling $79,726.20.
I make a motion that we approve change orders 10 through 15 for a total of $79,226.20. The motion to approve, is there a second? I second the motion. Motion second. Do you want to say something, Dick? Yeah, I think you said 226, not instead of 726. 79, 7, 26, yeah. Okay. 20. Yeah. We'll clarify that. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 As opposed? All right, that is approved. All right, that concludes what I have under new business. Anything from the board? Okay, we'll mo move on to the claims. We're not doing item B? No, no, that's been tabled. That actually is a, a council matter, not a board works matter. So move on to claims. Any discussion concerning the claims? Entertain a motion. Make, make a motion. motion. We approve the claims. Motion to approve and uh, second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Claims are approved and we we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion we adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Motion. motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. We are adjourned. Thanks for watching. Next up is the Revelle Commission.